we never in our wildest dreams imagined that we would be able to watch the most heartbreaking day in the state unfold on that Skycam network. The ultimate goal is to keep people safe and prevent loss of life. That's the core of who I am and what we've done here all 15, 16 years. And I knew what my plan was for the day. As far as the way it actually turned out, not what I expected. Knowing the kind of environment that we were in, I came on in several hours early, had my breakfast, and I had a director on standby at 3 a.m. and uh, called him about 10 after 3 and I said, we're going to go on in about 10 minutes. I believe the Weather Service is going to issue a tornado warning. Good morning, I'm Jason Simpson, live in the ABC 3340 Storm Alert Center. Uh, the National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for Pickens County and Lamar County until 415 this morning. Because the first thought was we're, we're just going to have your standard squall line with some embedded tornadoes and uh, they'll be relatively small, relatively short lived. These warnings will be up maybe till about six o'clock this morning and then we'll start to ease out of it into a little more stable situation until the afternoon. By the time I got down here, Jason was already on the air. What we ended up with was warning after warning after warning. For goodness, four hours, it didn't stop. The most surprising thing about it was the violence with which those tornadoes hit, especially in West Alabama early on. We do have tornado warnings in effect for Coleman County, for Walker County, for parts of Jefferson and Shelby counties. About 6.30 that morning, I got a phone call from one of my cousins in Holly Pond who knew I was on the air, knew I couldn't take a phone call, and I, was, I thought, why in the world are you calling me? You know that I can't take this call, and then it hit me that this giant rotating comma head feature on that line of storms had just passed over Holly Pond, and that he must have something to say. So I called him back, and he told me that the the house that he was in was okay, but uh, the the house he was in was okay, but the the farm at my aunt's house had been destroyed. Uh, the barn was on the ground, and all the trees were down. I knew Jason was struggling with the fact that he had a lot of folks in the path of that morning storm. And Jason got a little emotional on the air, and I don't blame him. If he didn't, I'd worry about him. We're humans. It was hours before I knew that my family was okay. And that's what makes it hard to talk about. It's not that the damage was so bad in Holly Pond. It's that, you know, here I am trying to hold it together on TV with, with James and, and with, with hundreds of thousands of people wanting to know where these storms are going next. And in the back of my mind, the wheels are turning. And, and you just don't know. I remember getting off the air and I looked at Jason and, and he looked at me and it's like well, we didn't even know what to say. It, it was like somebody had rammed their fist in our gut without us being ready. Soon after that we learned that five people had died and a quarter million people had no power. And that is an issue for this part of Alabama. It was greater than the inland effects of hurricanes Ivan and Katrina. I was sent to meet up with a photographer in Pell City uh, to see what had already happened over there and, and get that story. After the midday show, they called me to the newsroom and we had an impromptu meeting at the assignment desk. And I just remember looking at Gary, our news director, and saying, Gary, have I ever told you that I expected a violent tornado outbreak with mass casualties before? And he says, no. I said, well, today's that day. Today's the day. So this is a tornado emergency for the city of Hamilton. Clearly everybody in Hackleburg and Bear Creek be in a safe place now. We have one possible tornado approaching downtown Haleyville. Tornado emergency for the cities of Tuscaloosa and Northport. And this is a tornado emergency for the city of Birmingham. And a violent tornado is very close to Brent. Uh, this thing more than likely is on 231, about six miles south of downtown Asheville. We had multiple long track violent tornadoes that could kill people. My greatest struggle was how to handle that. Uh, it's like you, you don't even want to get off of one for more than 30 seconds, but we had to. There's a point in life where you, where you know that everybody is your brother, everybody's your sister, and this was that day. I'm not so sure that 
it was really sinking in for a lot of people exactly how strong those storms were that day. That is a large wedge tornado that is coming through downtown Coleman. And again, do, do not worry about the change in the structure. Uh, this thing will probably stay down for a long period of time. So again, we are calling a tornado emergency for the city of Coleman and points north and east. We're looking to the southwest from high atop the uh, Tuscaloosa County Courthouse. And uh, again, uh, we're going to stay with this as long as we keep power. Uh, if you watched us earlier this afternoon, we had a tornado just like that. that came through Coleman. I would suggest this might even be larger than the Coleman tornado. I think it's much larger than that one. Uh, th this thing looks like it might be over one half mile wide, uh, maybe up to three quarters of a mile wide. Uh, there's a large wedge tornado in the western suburbs of Birmingham. And again, this will be coming right up into the downtown area. I, I think it is very clear to me and to Jason that the greatest danger will be along and north of Red Mountain. Uh, so for those of you downtown Birmingham and points north, that's the extreme danger. It was just unimaginable, the, the pain that I was able to feel. And I know James felt the same way. Uh, we, we just felt pain for the people who were being affected by this because we were seeing it live. And the only thing we could do was warn people. And we have learned that if you can show people a live video stream of a tornado, they'll do something. Where a lot of times you show them radar, they don't do anything. It's very difficult to see and experience what we went through that day and just to know what so many people have gone through and continue to go through. these emotions started to set in as, as the death toll kept going up and up. Every day that the death toll kept going up, had a lot of emotions going through my mind, uh, all of them. Anger, I was angry at me, I was angry at God, I was angry at the system, because we failed the people of the state because the death toll was that high. I panicked a few times that day on the 27th and even broke down a few times in the van. But then again, you'd hear a story about somebody that, that heard the warning and they did the right thing. And they thought, well, you know, you got 36 people here that would be dead if, if we didn't do the right thing. So th then you felt like, okay, you know, we, we did some good. It really hurts to think back and look at that and wonder what we could have done better. But with the limitations of our equipment, the limitations of radar as it is now, we can see tornadoes with radar. We see the thunderstorm that produces them. So we can't tell what's happening down in that lowest part of the atmosphere. Uh, it just makes you wonder, what can we do better? And there are gonna be a lot of good things that come out of this, but there are gonna be a lot of memories that haunt me for a long time.